Hey, uh, Vortex here, and welcome to my review of the Topping DX3 Pro Plus. Obviously, this is kind of the generic box or packaging that I have. And yet, as usual, my full disclaimer is that I bought this from HiFiGo. I was not paid to this video, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. And the reason I bought this is because it's a combined unit, and um, it seems to be very, very good value for money for the hardware that's inside. And it's realistically just here to like kind of simplify my desktop setup. So I, don't, I typically have a small desk. So yeah, let's just see what you get. So like a kind of normal topping packaging, they all look kind of the same. It depends what you got. So obviously it's packed quite well. Warranty card, 2109. Obviously mine's the DX3 Pro Plus. Plus is the revised one. User manual should be in there. I'll have a look at that in a bit. A lot of it's just plug and play, really. Obviously I'm in the UK, so mine's come with this uh, UK specific plug, which is quite kind of cool. Because obviously everywhere uses plugs. That's not the UK kind of ver version. Most places are two plugs. And it is uh, 16 volt, 0.4 amps. But again, this is not a monster, so it should be okay. Uh, aerial. Obviously, because this has got a Bluetooth um, receiver. Obviously, um, USB to USB. Old school style there. Remote, which is super important for like, a lot of functionality. And yeah, that's what you get. I ordered the black one, because last time when I bought my topping, I had the silver one, let's say just do something different. Obviously protected cover, 3.5 only. To me that's fine, but I think for a few people, they probably won't like that. Uh, infinite scrolling um, for the volume. And it's a button. Again, this is very, I've got small hands, so you can see it's not big at all. Um, obviously high res, we already know about. RCA is in, out, two coaxials, which is kind of a niche, depends if folks need that. Optical, USB, obviously the antenna, which screws on, and yeah, DC 15 volts. Kind of cool, I like, that's why I wanted it, because this is this. So yeah, I'm going to obviously connect it to my PC and have a good play around with it, and I'll talk you through my use case really let's get let's get to it i thought before i even get to the use case i've had a look through the manual and it's actually very very in depth so this can actually do R, uh, over the rca's pre out and line outs which is very useful if you've got like powered speakers so here's what you get so the quaxels are inputs you can see what the controller does Again, if you really want to have a good look, pause it. All the input range, all the specs. A lot of this is way overkill for most people. We just DSD up to, I think, 256. If that matters, the BT in, as in Bluetooth in, goes up all the way to LDAC. It's even got low latency at Neptex HD, which is kind of which is more than enough. Um, the amplifier section is, well, I think, 1.8 watts at 32 ohm, which is a beast for the price. There's more specs. And how you use it obviously i'll try this filters i'll have to see which is that kind of the best um filter flip it over again there's just so much kind of information so i'll have to see there which filters the best probably going to be maybe one or two i'll have to check that and yeah so i'm going to spend a good few hours play with it and just see what my use case is like really see if it's uh worth me buying so this is just a run over of the remote control if people don't know rc15a same as we, as the one with my topping e30 but not all of these are the same so bear in mind but i'll just quickly run over it in case people don't know so obviously power simple flash is red mute volume up and down the left and right are between the modes obviously i'll show you the dac in a bit when i plug it in um, headphone only mode, line out, so you can either line out only or you can do like line out and headphone out at the same time. 
which is kind of unique. Uh, FIR is filters and there's seven. The default one is three, but I think the recommended one is two. But you, I can't really notice any difference, to be honest. M is gain, so it's from um, plus six to plus 19. Auto is the power mode, so by default is um, if you t if you basically turn your PC off or your laptop off or whatever you plugged in via USB, it then detects is like no connection and then it shuts off in 60 seconds. Um, and this half moon kind of image here is just the brightness. By default, it's the highest. I think uh, the lowest is probably the best, which is number one. And yeah, so I'm going to plug in the actual DAC now and show you what I can. And yeah, let's do it. So here's the DAC, turn it on. Also, one thing to note, the camera angle is a little bit weird because one of the negatives is this is the power cable. It's very short, 1.2 meters. So obviously my laptop is over here, but the drivers aren't installed. But I've tried this on my PC and it works perfectly fine. Here, you normally get PCM or DSD if it's in use. Um, normally it stays solid white for the USB connection. You press this. Optical, coaxial input one, and obviously input two, Bluetooth, and here. Um, when you change mode, it displays 384 if it's set as that. Obviously 99 is the lowest. Zero is the highest. Headphone mode here. If you press the actual uh, line up button, change to zero point one. Again, volume there. So it's it, it depends how you want to set it all up. Back to headphone mode here. Obviously, only three point five here, which might be a bit of a negative. Filters. So three, four, five, six, seven, one, two three back to the default uh, when it displays gain here that's when it's on high gain so it's in headphone mode which is zero two again all this is in the actual um, the user guide so it's a plus six again see gains disappeared so it's technically low gain press it again high gain that's it this is just the power modes that's it, so you don't really get many. Brightness, two, three, auto, and one for the lowest. Very straightforward. Again, just trying to the volume. All up to zero for highest. Make sure, otherwise you're gonna blow your brains out, so just be careful. So it works straightforward, but like I say again, if this is plugged into a PC or laptop, that stays solid. It's only because I'm not in range of my laptop or PC. PCs in a separate room. And yeah, not much to say really. It works exactly like it's supposed to. So obviously, take these off. I think most folks obviously use these RCAs into like powered speakers, powered monitors. You can also use this in pre-out mode or line-out mode, but you have to go into a menu. You have to hold the button when you turn it on, it gets to that menu. Obviously coaxial and USB. I think most folks are gonna use these two for inputs. PC, the USB is the easiest because you don't need drivers. Obviously optical is for the people who have phobias of USB. Obviously, the antenna for the Bluetooth goes in there. Uh, and that's pretty much it, really. Obviously, that's the model of mine. Mine's the black one. And, yes, yeah, sorry for the zoomed-in look, but it's just because the cable sucks because it's short. And, yeah, so I get into the conclusion. So on to the conclusion of my use of the Topping DX3 Pro Plus. So, yeah, negative depends on you kind of look at it. Is it's only got 35 most of my gear uses 3.5, but I think a lot of people may use 6.35, the quarter inch jacks. For me, that's perfectly fine. It's not an issue. For other people, it might be more of an issue, but for me, it isn't really. Um, Bluetooth on the back, which I didn't mention, works extremely well. It supports LDAC, 
upticks, upticks low latency, upticks HD, SBC, and AAC. Works fine. I, t I tried it with my Poker FT Pro. This only acts as a receiver, so you your phone will be the source. So if you've got something like Tidal, Spotify, whatever, or Bluetooth from that to this, not out from this. So it's not a transmitter, just a receiver. So bear that in mind. Works perfectly fine. Um, power output, so it's got obviously high and low gain. It works perfectly fine with sensitive IEMs. And I've tried this in high gain with my um, Odyssey EL8 playing iPhones works perfectly fine there's enough um, there's plenty to spare um, this will probably power easily like 95% of the headphones out there apart from some like tricky weird models which are like hard to power um, so like a neg ne negative really is the menu system it's a little bit complicated because there's like no real buttons the only button is the power obviously volume is unlimited so you can use the remote control all the time so if you got, you could use this as a sound bar. I have the RCAs to speakers at the back, and control the volume with the remote control. Perfectly works, perfectly fine. All of this is like wave for back on a desk with just your headphones plugged in. You can flip between them using the remote control. Super easy. Um, yeah, RCAs out. So like I said before, you can do line out or pre out. Line out's easy to get to in the menu. You have to you'd have to um, configure the pre out. So how you do that is when it's off, then turn it on with the power and do it, you do it that way. So straightforward. And the negative is the power cable is only 1.2 meters, which is not long enough. The topping E30 and L30 I have share the same problem. The cables aren't long enough. Like no, because my other uh, plug socket just down to the right it wasn't long enough for me to pull it that far on the desk with my PC which is directly below this is directly above where my PC normally is and it's an it's an it's fine for the actual length and the power transmitter would be uh, down and left a bit from where my PC is just about long enough but they really should be at least two meters I think for the cables but yeah apart from that I think I've covered all the bases uh, do I recommend this? Yes. This is normally $1.99, but if there's a deal on or a sale event or whatever, it might be cheaper. Easily the best thing I've probably had for $1.99. It's a beast. It does everything. Just the menu is a bit convoluted, convoluted, convoluted best way to say it. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's got more than enough power for what you need. The sound, which I didn't mention before, is topping, so it just sounds neutral. Uh, there's no real sound signature, it just sounds neutral, analytical, is probably another word. I'm perfectly happy with it. Again, my topping combo, the E30, L30, again, sounded like, kind of sounds the same to me. They've got the NFCA uh, amp arch architecture. This also has the ESS 9038Q2M DAC. Again, very good and obviously implemented very well. I'm very, very... I'm very, very happy with it. It does everything that I want, and it's very small. And, yeah, I obviously I won't waffle on too long because the video gets too long, but I do recommend this. Obviously, mine's the black one. to do one that's in all in silver. Um, yeah, for $1.99, I don't think the competition can beat that yet as of this video. Obviously, SMSL and SCHITT audio have got very close, but they're still more expensive. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you want to know in, in particular, just obviously the usual, let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching and take care.